it causes still some anxiety to raise up in me. And, and Pastor, to be honest with you, sometimes it causes me to bring it to question my fitness for the journey.
members go. Members praising it. Members putting it down. Members wanting to keep it. Members wanting to kick it out. Love it one moment. Hating them the next. And yet Sunday after Sunday. He stands right here. Proclaiming God's gospel. Can you tell me you got yourself a pastor? Beloved, let me get out of the way here. I'm convinced that society has become what it has become because the church is failing in being the church. Going on. I'm reminded in Acts 
chapter 20 when Paul called for the elders of Ephesus to come. And when he had called for those elders, it, it was as if the apples were getting ready to come.
held in the highest spirits, but when you talk to Leon, he's just Leon. We live in a time where everybody is concerned about titles and jockeying for position and not realizing that they're only trying to do with titles, but they're failing to do with their own names. That's why folk need them titles. Because they turn to the name and the dirt. But your title might tell me what level of academia you were accomplished in. Yeah. It might tell me what position you but it tells me nothing of your character. Yeah. It, it tells me nothing of your integrity or your faith, your long suffering or your love. Titles in your mind might point or entitle you to honor or respect among men. But I got news for you. My God is not a respecter of persons. I don't care where you from. I don't care how many degrees you have. How many levels are acting in your name. When it comes to the eyes of the Lord, we The only way to receive honor from my God is you must honor his. So Peter says, I am no different than you. He was a witness of the sufferings of Christ. I believe this could easily be explained. From a, no doubt he witnessed firsthand that the nine witnessed our Savior and Lord, the cure from scribes and Pharisees, suffering in the garden in the week of his passion, and of course the brutality of the cross. But given the context of this text and the setting, I'm inclined to believe that Peter was professing to his own life yeah. as to say a suffering of Christ. I am a witness of the suffering for Christ. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. For his works were to a greater avail. I testify to his own suffering. Yeah. Some of y'all don't believe it, but pastors suffer too. Yeah. Some of y'all don't believe it, but we deal with it. We hurt sometimes too. We cry sometimes too. We hurt for you. We hurt in our own struggles. And I can see Peter as if he was saying, expect suffering to come. Child of God, expect suffering to come. Expect the weariness of your flesh. But I like how he says it, for it appears that Peter was saying that in Christ. It appears that the sufferings of this present time, thank you. He was saying the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory. That is to be revealed. Yeah. But remain steadfast. Stay, stay diligent. Remember the battle is not yours. It belongs to the Lord. For we are right now the sons of God. And it does not yet appear what we but we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, and we shall see him as he is. He says he was also a partaker of this glory. Yes. Hallelujah. I'm going to run on, but so Peter tells him, he says, feed the flock. Feed the flock. He speaks to them here yes. as pastors, yes. saying, tend to the sheep. Yes. Jeremiah 3, the Bible says, God says, the Lord says, I will give you pastors according to my heart, which shall feed you with knowledge. You can't take your pastor for granted. Because you could be getting goat food. You could be thinking, you go over there thinking the grass is greener. And you get over there and it's astroturf. Yeah. You can't take a good who is in the treasures of the gospel to get back here and regretting the spirit has poured into it.
We're responsible for what we place. And you have been commissioned to the labor
hovering around the sheep. And they're not like a dog or a cat making really easily. They can't do that so easy. So the shepherd would take that all. And I was reading about it and it said it just pours it on their head and gets it in their ears and in their nose and puts the oil all over their horns and the rings and all of that. And, and this oil will serve. Because see, you know, flies, I've heard of the other one, don't you?
like a duck. Is a duck. So the only thing to teach sheep how to be sheep must be hallelujah. Thank God the under shepherds. Thank God will also count it as sheep among the rest of the sheep. So that when the chief shepherd uh -huh. shall appear, uh -huh. I want to tell you, Leon, yeah. don't get weary yeah. in well doing. Yeah. For God is not an unjust God yeah. who will not reward you yeah. for your work and your labor yeah. that you have shown. Towards the same. But my God is a faithful God. The Bible says that He is a rewarder. Thank God, all right. He says, when this chief shepherd here, He said, You shall receive.
when God has given you a jewel. This man, you've been with him for 32 years. You've witnessed his suffering. You've witnessed his loss. And yet, he stands faithful. And what you need to understand is his faithfulness is not because of you. But he pastors the way he pastors because he loves the God who has commissioned him. And he wants God one day when this soul life is over to look at and say well done thy good and faithful servant my brother I see you got a few jewels in your crown when the Lord places it on your head you're going to have some rubies in there you're going to have some emeralds in there you're going to have some diamonds in there for your faithful service God is going to go get your good robe. It's already fitted for you sitting in your mansion. Right there in your master room in the closet. And he's going to send for it and say, come and put it on my servant. Thank God for your pastor. Thank God for your pastor. You got pastors who are more interested and hopping around and getting the next biggest church that's going to pay up the most money. Instead of staying wherever it is God has planted them and where God is leading. Thank God for your pastor. My brother, I'm grateful for you. I'm grateful for you. I thank God for you. To God be the glory. Amen.